day. What an extraordinary event it is to have so many of you here with the artworks and performances. Now, I want to tell you a story about why this has come about. And my story starts a little while ago when my son came to China with me in 2012. And before that, I'd been doing some work in China. Uh, started in 2005, really got going in uh, 2008, 2009. But it turned out that my uncle and the family had been trading with China for many, many years, since the 1980s, trading silk with China, China and the UK. But I also knew that my grandparents had spent time in China both in 1963 and in 1967, which interesting years to be involved in China. So why did my grandparents go to China? Well, my grandmother's father, you see, I'm getting quite small on this picture now. My grandmother's father, Harry, went to uh, Shanghai for two years in 1887 uh, to, tr to learn the trade of silk with China and the UK. So, why did Harry go to China? Well, that's because my great-great-grandfather started trading with uh, China in 1875. So it's a nice story. Why does that matter? Well, the reality is that in all those years of trading, when I arrive in China or where Chinese people come here to see me, I don't understand enough about those people. So we have some Chinese visitors here today. I don't really understand why a hot breakfast is important. And in China, this is important. Chinese people really sometimes think they would like to go to the house where Harry Potter lives and they want to know how often I've met the Queen. But also in business, I spend most of my time trying to interpret between China and the UK. So this started me thinking about why don't we understand each other better. Meanwhile, we had a number of occasions where Chinese children came to uh, my house and came to the family, uh, family home in Cheshire. And you can see some older people, and Katie's here, she's here with us today, and Amara's probably in there somewhere. Um, so they came to our house, and that started to have an occasion where young people were really engaging with uh, the UK. And we had an absolutely fantastic occasion where a dragon suddenly appeared on the lawn at home and enchanted my parents as it danced around the garden. I began to realize there's really something here about this combination of arts and performance to link us together. And we had an extraordinary time. And the bottom right hand corner here, you can see me saying goodbye to some of the uh, people who visited. And the opportunity was obvious at that point that the children completely understood the link between China and the UK and the link with their friends and uh, contacts in England. And it made me realize that this was a very important link to put together. Then a group came to my own home in Ashwell, just outside Cambridge. Now of all the pictures here of us drinking tea and playing in the garden and, and uh, families meeting each other. We arranged for English families to meet with the Chinese visitors. The most important picture you probably can't even see really captured the imagination of what we were looking at, which was two children who just met taking a gift that had been given one to the other and working out how to use chopsticks. Uh, and they were instantly talking to each other they then went back to the English girl's house to see how the house uh, and how they lived. They have communicated since, they keep communicating now, and they probably understand China and the UK better than I do, because they're talking to each other. So this actually 
is the origin of why we're here today, to, to link together, to sweep aside that misunderstanding. And you all are ambassadors for that activity, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and contributing to that activity. Who that travels far knows much, so I think this is the best uh, interpretation to see why this event is so important. Because uh, you invite so many Chinese young guys here and uh, you give the opportunity for them to experience what British culture is, what British people are. So, uh, and issue your hospitality and invite them to your, to your home. Such a big home can hold so many people. So, uh, I should say thank you. So, uh, you, you make great contribution to the exchange between UK and China. So Kingsford is the first school in the whole UK to start Mandarin Chinese lesson in a compulsory curriculum. And in 2005, we become the first Confucius classroom, uh, classroom school in the England. And in 2007, and we did a lot of close collaboration with China, part with Hanban. And in 2012, so we got the best Confucius classroom in the world. Currently, we've got 500 students learning Mandarin Chinese in our school. They start the Mandarin Chinese from year seven, and from year eight and year nine, they have their options to choose Mandarin Chinese or Spanish or French. And then these lovely students are some of the year eight students and some of the year nine students. And then today, we're gonna perform one of the dramas we've already done. So this drama we got the national prize of the Mandarin Chinese speaking competition this year. Do Unfortunately, um, the next school was not able to be here today, but they did ask to be represented. So, um, in the spirit of the exchange, they've sent along a video of them being visited in their school by a school from Shanghai. Teach them how 
how to uh, how to write uh, how to write uh, Chinese words. It's helped me because they're teaching me loads of other words that I never you know, knew, and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun today. Superstar.